Welcome back, Blade fans. This is This Old Sword with another little off-the-beaten-track review of a type of knife. And uh, these are examples that I have. Uh, probably not as broad an example as I'd like to show. But at any rate, this is about the Quaken. And... You'll see quite a few knives here by uh, Boker and at least three of them by Boker and uh, designed by Todd Burnley, who's very well known for his Quakens. He's probably made more modern day Quakens than anybody else. But uh, I have these four and I have one fifth example that comes close. But first, bear with me here while I give you a little background on the Quaken which I understand the uh, is now pronounced Kaiken, or supposed to be pronounced Kaiken. I guess it has to do with the uh, etymology of the language. And I'm not a linguist, and I'm not a uh, Japanese scholar by any means. <laughs> I've been exposed to Japanese stuff basically through Japanese martial arts long time ago. And a visit way back when to uh, the island of Japan. Islands. Anyway, see I'm already rambling on. A little background from Wikipedia, and you can have your own sources on this, and you may know far more than I do about this, but the Quaken or Kaiken was once carried by men and women of the samurai class in Japan. It was useful for self-defense in indoor spaces where the long blade katana and intermediate sword wakizashi were inconvenient. Women carried them in their kimono either in a pocket-like space or in the sleeve pouch for self-defense and for ritual suicide by slashing the veins in the left side of the neck. Lovely thought. When a samurai woman married, she was expected to carry a kaiken with her when she moved in with her husband. And I was also wondering what the difference was between a tanto and a kaiken because they're very close. Well, the translation is that the uh, tanto is considered to be a short sword and the kaiken or quaken is considered to be a pocket sword. So these obviously are even far smaller than that because they're folding knives and this is 2022. And uh, we generally don't carry such large things around, even longer fixed blades. But at any rate, you get the point. <laughs> so we've got here a Boker, a Boker, a Boker, and an SRM. And uh, in a bit, I'll bring in one other that I think very closely fits the category, if not exactly so. One thing I notice about the... Uh, Quaken or Kaiken is that they have more of a point and they are considered to be a dagger. So you notice on a Tonto, and we're talking traditional Tonto, not chisel point Tonto, American Tonto, but we are talking about a blade here that basically narrows to more of a point than on your standard Tonto. And I don't have any standard Tontos here, for example. But uh, again, maybe that fifth example will help us. Anyway, this is the Boker Quaken Air. And that's a Todd Burnley design. This one happens to have natural G10 jade G10 uh, handle slabs with a black frame. And a little hard to open with that little bit of a nub that they give you for a flipper tab. It's a VG10, and again, by Todd Burnley. Good length knife. I mean, if you like the thinner blades, that's what you're going to get with the uh, Quakens. Nice deep carry clip on this. This was pretty popular last year. And again, you really got to go after that flipper tab because uh, you're working against the detent, even though... It's set forward a bit, and even though there's a good amount of jimping on it. These all work very well as kind of a pocket stick as well. So if you wanted to keep it closed and use it for an impact type 
device, you can certainly do that. Ah, boy, that's a tough one to open. So that's the Quake in Air. You can see the blade shape. And Todd likes to grind that little swedge in the middle at the top, which relieves a little bit of material. I have gone out and looked, because there has been complaints about that, that it aesthetically isn't right and isn't good and so on and so forth. But I don't believe those people that complained about that went out and took a look at the traditional Quakens. And uh, most of them that I saw do have that little swedge ground into the middle. And uh, you could say that that's sort of like a pressure relieving, friction relieving section so that you get better penetration or not. I don't know. Here is the out the front version by Boker and designed again by Todd Burnley. So we've got uh, a couple autos with us today and a couple manuals. There again is that long tapered blade. These can make good EDC knives. You're just not going to get a lot, although this is a flat grind as near as I can tell. Yep. You're not going to get a real fine edge because you've got a narrow blade and a relatively narrow grind, even though it's about two-thirds of the way up on the blade. This one's nice, aluminum handle, uh, hidden lanyard, pin. Come in a couple different colors. I think there's a black on this. Really positive action. Like all autos, you're going to get a tiny bit of, you don't get so much up and down as side to side. You know, unless you're buying a Hawk Deadlock or uh, other expensive out the front knife, you're going to get a little bit of wiggle even on Microtex. Just the nature of the mechanism and the beast in those cases. Although they're working on it and I think SOG has got theirs to have very little bit of wiggle. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. But again, you get basically a stick sort of uh, handle on the Quaken, and, and many Tontos as well. This one got a number on top, 052. And uh, this one is D2. So if you're down on D2, you won't like that one. Leave that for last. Here is another Boker. However, this is a Boker that was made in the USA by Protec. None other than Protec. And again, a Todd Burnley design. Really nice action. And look how that closes up completely flat. Obviously, the out the front does. And uh, pretty much, not pretty much, but completely, that blade is hidden on the Quake and Air as well. So, yep. Button actuated, heavy spring, flies right out, very typical for Boker. And a good tip on this one, not reinforced, but the uh, stock is brought to almost full thickness right out to the end. And yep, there is your swedge again on the top. Um, traditional stick-like handle. And often the real Quakens were wrapped with cord or they could have a wood handle. I've seen both. Interesting they did thing they did with this one is cut that notch, that trough in the top. Reason being that since the blade is flush with the handle, you need a place to make sure that you've locked it in place. So when you're closing this one, you want to seat it with your thumb. That, at least, is what I found. So, yeah, again, you get a nice uh, point at the end of that aluminum handle. Clips are not necessarily deep carry, but that's okay. It's a decent little short clip. And, uh, oh, yeah, steel on this one, I believe, is, yes, 154 cm. Fair amount of branding, maybe a little bit too much. Got to stick everybody's name on there, right? And uh, there. So I think without that, all that billboarding, this would be a nicer looking knife. But for about 150 bucks, I think it's not a bad way to get a ProTech. At least that's what I recall the price was. Here is an SRM that came out recently. 
And this is the 9215. It's in D2. Uh, when I did the review on this, a lot of people uh, seem to go out and get one. They are nice. Deep carry clip. And uh, kind of a wonky extension there for a lanyard. Probably could have done without it. Would have looked nicer. You get this pattern in here that makes it look like a wrapped handle with the diamonds. And you got a thumb disc for the opener on top. And it's kind of a soft detent definitely holds it in there but uh, you can roll it out and you can give it a little wrist and flick it out with your thumb as well good length handle and uh, does this one disappear all the way inside as well pretty much except right up there they need to give you a little purchase for the thumb disc Got some good jimping there on the handle. And that's the SRM. I don't want to cut my background. Okay. Now here's the kind of exception, odd man out. This is a Brad Zinker designed Wii knife called the Miscreant. And I think, um, notice that it's got more of a forward belly. They're not advertising this as a Kaiken or Quaken, but to me with that stick like handle and that more of utility blade and almost four inches by the way um, this is a nice knife it's pretty much air weight now um, I believe Brad Zinker also designed for Boker a the Urban Trapper if I'm not mistaken which this is kind of a high-end two hundred dollar ish version of the Urban Trapper and Brad's signature trademark is these large skeletonized holes in the handle. And if you look up the Urban Trapper, you'll see that they have a very similar configuration. This one is S35VN, I believe. Frame lock, very thin. But I'm throwing that in just because I think it, uh, it can qualify as a Quaken with the exception that the blade again has more of that forward belly and less of that um, taper near the point. So I figured that would be just a fun little exercise to take a look at these Quaken style blades in folding configuration. So we got the out the side auto there uh, made by Protec. We've got the SRM. We've got the Brad Zinker miscreant. We've got the Boker out the front by Todd Burnley. And we have the Boker Quake and Air by Todd Burnley. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Hey, let's throw in this guy just for size comparison. Hey, I almost let you go, but I know we like our comparisons. So if you happen to have a Griptilian, that's how she fits in. A little shorter than some of these. Okay, be well. Again, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. See you soon.